This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on The South Today, security is stepped up a notch for Anzac Day commemorative services in the South. Dozens of minis travelling thousands of kilometres make a fleeting trip to Dunedin on their way to Invercargill. And children receive a hands-on lesson around the care of some of New Zealand's most treasured species. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Holly Buchanan. Anzac Day 2019 in the South was a little bit different, but also the same as ever. Following the Christchurch Mosque terror attacks, the largest Anzac gatherings saw additional armed police in discreet but respectful and watchful guard. But the core elements of Anzac Day remained constant. Several thousand people gathered at the Dunedin Cenotaph for Dawn Parade yesterday, marking the moment Australian and New Zealand troops landed on the Gallipoli Peninsula on April the 25th, 1915, a defining moment in the First World War, a conflict now a century old. 100 years ago, New Zealand marked the first peacetime Anzac Day. Across the country, people gathered to remember losses and experiences that were still war. Air Force Group Captain Carl Nixon reflecting both on New Zealanders who died in overseas wars and on the New Zealanders who died in the recent Christchurch mosque attack. As a nation, we are still grieving for those lost, for the suffering of families, and also from the knowledge that this kind of crime could happen in our world. Anzac Day services were well attended throughout central Otago as well, including Cromwell ceremonies, which started with a service at the town cemetery. Between six and seven hundred people attended the dawn service on the Wanaka Lake shore, many reflecting on a very different time and a different attitude to war. My old man put his age up two years to get across there. He was, he was initially knocked back, walked around the block, came back two years older. That's his, it's his words. And it, so it meant a lot, it means a lot. We, the society we live in today means a lot to be drawn completely on what these people do. Oh, I think it's really important. It means, yeah, it means a lot. Um, um, no, sorry, can't. Kaitaia resident Raymond Dunn was the centre of attention in Queenstown, the 98-year-old providing the most poignant moment at the dawn service as he slowly but surely walked to gently lay his poppy in respect of his fallen comrades. The former Queenstown resident served in the Royal Australian Air Force as a wing commander between 1940 and 1945, the only one of his class in the Air Force to return. In Belclutha, more than 500 attended the district's RSAs, opting not to alter or cancel any Anzac Day plans in light of the recent Christchurch attack, despite anxieties leading to cancellations elsewhere in the country. More than a thousand people turned up for the Anzac Dawn Parade at the Cenotaph in Invercargill, while in Omaru, around 500 gathered to pay their respects at the North Otago RSA Garden of Memories. The South Today. And Anzac Day events were also to the fore in Canterbury yesterday. In Timaru, residents flocked to Caroline Bay for the annual Civic Anzac Day service at the Sound Shell. Scouts, St John Cadets, dignitaries and others paraded into the service and the South Canterbury Aero Club conducted a flyover. Various representatives laid wreaths and the last post was played. Following the service, residents wandered through a field of crosses nearby. Further up the road in Christchurch, Prince William visited the Justice and Emergency Pr Services Precinct and met Commissioner of New Zealand Police, Mike Bush, as well as Superintendent District Commander of Canterbury, John, John Price. The Pork Pie Charity Mini Run has made a typically fleeting visit to Dunedin on its way down to Invercargill. The road trip raises money for Kids Can and this year saw more than 60 vehicles making the trip from the top of the North Island to the bottom of the South. Rolling into Dunedin on their way to Invercargill, the annual Pork Pie Charity Run has attracted 60 teams this year, all doing their own fundraising for Kids Can. 
Some competitors bought their cars especially for the event, like this couple from the far north. Oh, it's great. It's sort of exciting when you're raising the money, especially when you, when you get some, and that you kind of build up a... Well, every team yeah. does their own thing and their own way of fundraising. Um, and when you look at your bank balance or the fund that you've raised, we've raised nearly 16,000 bucks just us. The event begins in Kaitaia and ends up in Invercargill, paying homage to classic Kiwi road trip film Goodbye Pork Pie. Starting in 2009, the event is held every two years, attracting people from around the globe. I'm from just out of London to be over here, just to do this run. Always been a mini fan. Uh, my mother signed up for the run um, a year ago. Uh, she bought the Cooper to do it, uh, and her, the person she had signed up to do it um, backed out, said no, that just wasn't for them. Um, so my sister said she would underwrite my ticket over here if I came, so I uh, watched Goodbye Pork Pie about 30 times. Even engine problems like burnt valves and blown head gaskets hasn't stopped the road trip from going ahead. This custom Mini Mac needed a whole new gearbox in Whanganui to get its trailer load of Kumara all the way to Invercargill. Competitors say it's all part of the experience. Everybody gets in, helps each other, garages open up around the country and we get on with it. The rally finished on Wednesday and has raised more than $250,000 for the Kids Can Charitable Trust. In Dunedin, the South Today. A man allegedly blew more than three times the legal alcohol limit, crashed, sorry, a man allegedly more than three times the legal alcohol limit crashed into three parked cars in Dunedin yesterday. The 35-year-old man was processed by police last night and blew 839 milligrams of alcohol. The legal limit for driving is 250. Police became aware of the man after he crashed into the parked cars in Littlebourne Road in Roslyn. He's set to appear in the Dunedin District Court. Children were encouraged to bring in their favourite toy animals to Otago Museum's Hutton Theatre this week to be mended by some of the best in the business. The team from the Dunedin Wildlife Hospital was on hand to help teach the youngsters, youngsters how to treat injuries as part of the Wild Dunedin Nature Festival. Some school holiday fun with a difference. Dozens of children were encouraged to bring their favourite toy animals along to Otago Museum's Hut and Theatre this week to receive treatment for all sorts of injuries and ailments. Part of the story today was to encourage the kids to bring their soft toys along. and um, We were... You know, feigning some injuries and uh, then uh, putting bandages on in injured dogs, unicorns, lions, monkeys and a plethora of other soft toys. The event is part of the Wild Dunedin Nature Festival. For those who brought their injured furry friends along, it was a chance to learn how to treat injuries with the team from the Dunedin Wildlife Hospital. Certainly this demographic is a really important demographic for us because these guys are the future in terms of uh, potentially helping injured animals in the future but also making sure they don't get into the problems that they have in the past. Attendees also discovered what goes on behind the scenes at the hospital where staff treat and rehabilitate some of New Zealand's most treasured species. We're always, always very dependent on the support of the community, both um, just for, for, from, from verbal support but also financially. I mean, the community itself has been one of our best supporters and uh, along with our volunteers is one of the reasons it's still operational and functioning well. The festival winds up this weekend with five walks scheduled to be held around the city and Dunedin in the South today. Still to come on the South Today, a group of Aucklanders trespassed from a Dunedin cinema and a number of harrowing stories have been released in CTV's Challenge the Silence series. At Green Island Medical Centre, we are committed in caring for our future and present generations. We know as a young person, coming to the doctors can be quite daunting. Our highly skilled doctors and nurses will make your experience one where you will leave with a smile. Your house is very important to us. Every Kiwi deserves a reliable garage door. Rely on Garador to protect your important stuff. Just like Darren. His Garador keeps his favourite ride in mint condition. We have a huge range at affordable prices. Visit our website for a free consultation. We stand behind every door. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits.
at the hard to find bookshop we sell quality books on all subjects from the rare to the recent and where viable we will come to you we have a great reputation for integrity and honesty so if you're downsizing or sorting an estate and have books to sell contact us <laughs> say goodbye to your pet, Heaven Sent Pet Cremations are here to help you through this difficult experience. Call Heaven Sent Pet Cremations today for their care and guidance. Phone 489 2274. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a MOLMAP. MOLMAP is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Don't suffer in silence. Call Sunny Chin, Chi Master Body Technician for Structural Muscular Emotional Body Work. Phone 03 4250 606 for all your pain relief. Step into Ross Cafe located at Ross Home in North East Valley. We have a great range of hot and cold food, friendly service and a warm atmosphere that you are sure to enjoy. We look forward to serving you soon at Ross Cafe. I'm from the Parks Department. Have you got a permit for that fire? Welcome back. A group of Auckland men were trespassed from a Dunedin cinema yesterday after one of them flaunted cash while claiming ISIS pays well. Police say four men in their late 20s on holiday from Auckland were causing anxiety at Rialto Cinemas yesterday evening. One of the men showed a wad of money to his friends and claimed ISIS, the international terrorist organisation, paid well. Police were called and officers trespassed the men. The offender later said it was a joke and no further action was taken. Eleven harrowing stories of sexual trauma were released in CTV's Challenge the Silence video series, which can be seen on the Otago Daily Times website. At a recent special screening for the participants with their family and friends and invited guests, they saw their stories and the stories of their fellow survivors for the first time. They're exhausted. Um, I know they would have been, they would, none of them would have slept last night um, knowing this was going to be coming out um, but I think they, they're proud of themselves and proud of each other and, uh, and they know we're all going to be, be there together to, to support each other as we go through this. And you think, you know, 20, 23 years bashing your head against a brick wall and then you see, see these guys having the courage to share their stories in the hope that other men will come forward, it's just amazing. I congratulate you on what you're doing tonight the challenge the silence, because again, in here, the only way we can address this, we have to confront it. It is not acceptable in our favour. And I sat there tonight listening to those stories, and I just couldn't help but cry. They're so real, they're so genuine, they're so touching, and they're cruel. I've put it out on my Facebook for the first time today, yeah. to my whanau and friends, and the response has been awesome. Very touching to see the other men's stories, and, and I think that the messages are going to be powerful. I think the fact that 
the stories are starting to be told is just going to be the little pebble that starts the snowball of conversations and people being able to share their story, both men and women. Um, and I think the open dialogue that's going to come from this is going to be really powerful. And I often wonder just what has this cost New Zealand society and how many children are now growing up today suffering that legacy from that legacy and what do we need to do as a nation to put these wrongs right I don't think we'll ever stop the abuse of children but at least we need to we need to get it out there and we need to get, allow those people that have been hurt to come forward and talk and then hopefully one day we may be able to eliminate the sexual abuse of children and uh, that's all that's all we can hope for After the break on The South Today, the story of a World War II veteran who doesn't always recognise his wife's face, but always recognises her perfume. And a wet weekend for many this weekend. We find out more after the break. here and it's too late to sow seed but don't despair ready lawn is the answer to all your garden woes call ready lawn today on 027 228 at the hard to find bookshop we sell quality books on all subjects from the rare to the recent and where viable we will come to you we have a great reputation for integrity and honesty so if you're downsizing or sorting an estate and have books to sell contact us the Green Island Medical Centre offers everything for your family's needs. Whether you are travelling or coming in to discuss health symptoms, our medical staff provide the best of care. We often manage my health, making booking an appointment or requesting a repeat prescription a breeze. We welcome families like yours. Give us a call today, phone 03 488 2754. When it's time to say goodbye to your pet, Heaven Sent Pet Cremations are here to help you through this difficult experience. Call Heaven Sent Pet Cremations today for their care and guidance. Phone 489 2274. Every Kiwi deserves a reliable garage door. Rely on Garador to protect your important stuff. Just like Darren. His Garador keeps his favourite ride in mint condition. We have a huge range at affordable prices. Visit our website for a free consultation. We stand behind every door. Most of us have spots on our skin. That's quite normal. Finding skin cancer as early as possible is key to successful treatment. Book in for a free check of one to two moles or a comprehensive full body check with the Mole Doctor in Waverley. Ricky here from Beds R Us Dunedin, your local sleep specialists. Come in and try our huge touchscreen sleep selector, taking the hard work out of choosing the right bed for you. See you here. Oh, help! Don't suffer in silence. Call Sunny Chin, Chi Master Body Technician for structural, muscular, emotional body work. Phone 03 4250 606 for all your pain relief. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. Step into Op Shop on St Andrew and discover a place with plenty of bargains for yourself, your friends and the whole family. We have new items arriving every day. Visit us for a fabulous range of economy and upmarket clothing, accessories, books, shoes and more. Shop with us and support your community.
Welcome back. A stroke and dementia have robbed World War II veteran Neil Harper of many things, but not his sense of smell. His wandering memory means he doesn't always recognise wife Laurel when she visits him at Leslie Groves Hospital in Dunedin, but he always recognises her perfume. This year's theme for Poppy Day is We Are Family. Family is what the RSA is all about. It's, it's about supporting veterans, their spouses, their wives, children, the whole family. One example of this is Neil. Neil's a veteran of World War II. He served in Bougainville. He lived with his wife Laurel till a year or so ago and then he had to go into a rest home. He got to the stage where he couldn't recognise Laurel, but he does remember what perfume she wears. You are my wee sweetie. When I go to see Neil, as long as I've got the perfume on, he knows me. If I put a different type on, he doesn't know me. A person with dementia like Neil may forget a name, may forget a voice. Uh, in this case, it's the perfume that has cut through that and, and reconnected the two of them. I was talking to Laurel one day, organising some lawn mowing for her, and she said, I've just about run out and they don't make it anymore. It frightened me that there was no more left. Without that perfume, I don't know what I'll do, but... So this got me thinking and I talked to her chemist. They managed to talk to their reps and we eventually found that, yes, the stuff wasn't being made anymore, but there was a stash of it in the Milton's pharmacy. Mm -hmm. Through the chemist and myself, we managed to organise some perfume, which I was able to give to Laurel. Neil gets it. I think he's recognised the significance of what is at some level such a small act and, and yet something that has made such an incredible difference for Neil and Laurel. I love my job. My official title is a support advisor. Um, a lot of people know us as welfare officers. I support wherever I can and that might be financial or um, emotional support. When people give on Poppy Day it means so much to our veteran community. It could be a bottle of perfume for Laurel, any number of things that makes their well-being better. I can often see firsthand the difference that a little bit of money makes. Every donation does count. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. Security stepped up a notch for Anzac Day services in the South, with armed police present at the larger ceremonies across the region. Many minis travelling thousands of kilometres made a fleeting trip to Dunedin on their way to Invercargill in the tyre tracks of a famous yellow mini. And Dunedin's Hutton Theatre went to the dogs this week, as well as the unicorns and teddies, as members of the Wildlife Hospital shared their skills. And now a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT. Welcome, Philip. Yes, hi, Holly. And lots of reading for the weekend as oh, usual. Sure. Uh, obituary page, uh, Ron Polinsky, the uh, well-known writer, sports writer and um, uh, sports hall of fame uh, who runs that, has written a really nice and large obituary on Yvette Williams, ah. the Needham girl, of course, the first mm. uh, winner of a uh, gold medal at the Helsinki Games. So look for that. On our region's pages, there's a feature about remote workers uh, based in Wanaka and the three examples. One of them runs a safari business in Botswana, of all things, from Wanaka. So it's there you go. That's what you can do nowadays. The mix, there's a big uh, section, several pages on winter fashion. Um, so we want to know about that sort of stuff. And an in-depth interview on the singer Shane, pa Shane Carter uh, growing up in, in tough Brockville and then during eventful life, which uh, carrying on is most interesting and most well written. Bruce Munro's done a very good job on that. Mm, good. And a major feature tomorrow, of course, the, the survivors of the helicopter crash in the Auckland Islands uh, spoke to the media today, and we've got uh, pictures and a nice big story on that. Great story. Thanks very much, Philip. And time now for a look at the weather. Tonight's weather proudly brought to you by Mole Map. Beginning with the Southern View, Waitaki Mayor Gary Kircher reading with children on Anzac Day. 
Starting off at the northwest of the South Island, Greymouth and Westport can expect rain and highs of 18 degrees. Across to the northeast, Nelson and Blenheim, you're also in for rain with a slightly warmer high of 19. In Canterbury, where the wet theme continues with rain or showers for this region, plan for a high of 21 degrees in Kaikoura and Christchurch. Ashburton, you're a bit cooler on 19. In the southern towns, plan for fresh southwesterlies and showers right across the region. Balclutha, the Catlins, Lumsden and Gore should all reach 13 degrees. Heading westwards to the central lakes, this region again following the wet weather trend. Wanaka, Queenstown, Alexandra should reach 15 degrees, while Tiano, you're looking at a high of 13 with showers. And up to the northern towns, Timaru and Omaru, you have decreasing northerlies and rain. Expect a high of 19 degrees in Timaru and 16 for those in Omaru. Similar in Twizel and Omarama, where you're in for heavy rain with decreasing northwesterlies. And the mercury is expected to climb to 15 for you both. And in Dunedin, cloudy tonight with an overnight low of 11. Periods of rain tomorrow morning with fresh, mild northerlies dying out, then showers and increasing sunny periods during the afternoon with cooler, moderate southwesterlies, looking at a high of 15 and a low of 6. Mostly cloudy and cool on Sunday with northerlies developing again with a high of 13 and a low of 9 degrees. Heading to Invercargill, rain tonight with gusty northwesterlies and an overnight low of 10. Rain easing to showers and increasing fine periods tomorrow with moderate to fresh cool southwesterlies. Plan for a 12 degree high and a low of 7. Becoming colder on Sunday with showers and gusty westerlies, a high of 11 and an overnight low of 7. That's it from the team here at the South today. For the latest news from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz or follow Channel 39 on Facebook or YouTube. Thanks for joining us. Have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Good night. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand On Air.